I think one of the easiest spells, if we can call it that, within Trolldom, traditional folk magic and magical arts of Scandinavia, is the method to get a good memory. Melisse, or Lemon Bomb, or Mother Worth, cut it into small pieces and crush it, pour wine on it and let it stand overnight in a sealed container. Distill it and each day drink a spoonful. Supposedly, this will give you a good memory to understand all things and keep them in your memory. This I can easily do. I love grape juice. Well, I'm Ari Therger and today I'm here to express a thought concerning something that, let's say, slightly bothers me just a little bit. It's concerning Scandinavian Iron Age semi-shamanic divinatory arts known as Seythr, which many have interpreted as a form of witchcraft, or indeed to be Scandinavian pre-Christian witchcraft, and often its practitioners have been labeled by many authors and many people in general, probably influenced by English translations that I definitely do not agree with. Well, uh, they have been labeled witches. I thought this would be an appropriate subject for the last video of September in this channel, uh, since October is at hand, finally. Well, uh, this video will come out on the last Wednesday of September 2022, but I have actually recorded this a couple of months before. I'm in the past. Time is an illusion. There is only the sun, the moon and the stars. Every other sense of time is purely unreal, so you and I are both here at the same time, at this very moment, forever in the present. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I'm always inspired by October. It is a month I deeply yearn for since the end until its very beginning once again to begin the cycle anew. Of course, you may say, Arith, October is overrated. I much prefer the warmer months. You insolent blasphemous wretch! Ah yes, uh, I almost forgot. I'm here to answer the question, were Viking witches real? You could say that, yes, indeed, they were. Scandinavian Late Iron Age, or otherwise commonly known as the Viking Age, did have witches, of course. But what is in question here isn't the existence or non-existence of traditional folk magic and people who practiced it in such a period and geographical reality, but the very term witch is, or has been, in my opinion, misused to represent women practitioners of Seder. And they were not witches in the senses and meanings that term carries, but instead they were something else, which we shall see further ahead. And the use of the term witch may not be appropriate to use because it often distorts meaning in this context and may lead to a misunderstanding when we deal with this subject from a scientific perspective. That's the point. Because you, in your daily life and magical affairs, you can call yourself whatever you identify yourself with. So that's n n not the focus here. It really isn't that. The focus isn't on our contemporary beliefs and, and behaviors and understandings in terms of traditional folk magic, but rather the focus is trying to understand the mentalities of the past and properly address the issues with the proper terms that can convey a message that is as faithful as possible to the realities of the past so we may better understand them, right? So, uh, we often hear about Nordic witches, especially when we are dealing with the Volur, a vulva often being called a Nordic witch. However, it is not clear that they even existed, at least not in the medieval European sense of what was understood as a witch. Nowadays, it is very common in pop culture to use the term witch for any type of sorcery or magic practitioner during the Viking Age and other pre-Christian periods and cultures. Prophetesses, healers, magicians, priestesses, sorceresses, soothsayers, etc. But is this correct from a scientific point of view? That, that's the real question. First of all, what does witchcraft mean? Well, it is a concept created by scholastic individuals linked to the church in congruence with late medieval popular beliefs. <laughs> I am not talking about the etymological roots of the word witchcraft, because in several languages the words to designate the magical religious process of a popular and animistic character, traditional folk magic, and its practitioners 
have deep roots in the cognitive understanding of pre-Christian populations. I'm talking about the concept itself and the meaning created by the Church and which remains to this day. And this junction of words, witchcraft, right? The witch as a woman dealing with magic and the occult in medieval popular beliefs, whose powers are given through a pact with the devil. These types of witches were also known to exist in medieval Scandinavia and the concept of the pact with the devil was quite popular all around Europe, even in Iceland. So, in medieval Scandinavia, there were witches as a person whom the church called a witch under the church's understanding of what constituted a witch. But calling a witch a woman who practices magic in pre-Christian Scandinavia may not be the best term and can indeed lead to several misconceptions and confusion. Quite a lot of confusion. Uh, this confusion may also result from the fact that modern-day women, mostly pagan women, uh, modern-day neo-heathen women who practice witchcraft and are more turned to Nordic-related traditional folk magic, call themselves Nordic witches. And it may get even more confusing when they both express a relation to the arts of Seder and at the same time call themselves Nordic witches, leading to a misconception that practitioners of Seder in the past were witches. Again, you call yourselves whatever you want and whatever is more comfortable to you and what you identify yourself with. I'm not here to dispute that or to purposely offend anyone. Although we live uh, in a moment of our modern societies in which it's, it seems many people are just sitting there waiting to be offended and the slightest misplaced word or the purposely inability to understand a thought is reason enough to cancel people and no possible conversation can be established leading to the preservation of ignorance. <laughs> but well, uh, the concept of witchcraft involves two basic ideas, diabolism and heresy. Thus, a witch would be, in the Christian imagination, one who made a pact with the devil, rebelling against the church. This manifests itself clearly and objectively only from the 14th century onwards in Europe, that is, at the end of the Middle Ages. Thus, in using the term witch for the Viking Age women practitioners of magic, we are committing a historical and philological error, which isn't likely to offend anyone at this point, as women practitioners of magic from the Scandinavian Iron Age and early Nordic Middle Ages are all dead by now probably, unless you plan on waking one up from her deathly slumber because you eager for knowledge. Now, that's another matter. Now, after the work La Sorcier by Jules Michelet, uh, 1862, the figure of the medieval witch starts to have positive connotations in the West and, parallel to the continuity of her pejorative stereotypes, gains momentum uh, with the cinema, TV series and literature of the 20th and the 21st centuries. More than a simple synonym for sorceress and magician, the witch becomes a figure of empowerment for contemporary women. But it's not just pop culture that uses this synonym. Also well-known translators commonly use the expression witch for Norse literary sources translated into English, especially uh, the amic words vulva, prophetess, seitkona, woman of this Seder, or woman practitioner of Seder, and Spokona, prophetess, soothsayer. A more neutral and generic translation for Seder is magic, even though it is for most a divinatory art. In the Scandinavian late medieval period, the names Trollkono, which appear, as well as Throllathing, the, the, the Thrall assembly, the witch's assembly, the Sabbath, Trolldumer, witchcraft. And the Nordic expressions X, Hexe, Hexa become in current use until today from the Renaissance onwards, already with a strong influence or very strong influences from Germany and continental Europe under the Christian mentality. So you see there are clear differences in the terms and how they have been applied and the mentality that has constructed these terms and applied 
apply them towards that mentality. From an academic perspective, if we translate vulva into English as witch, this is an error, because she wasn't understood as a witch, she wasn't called a witch. In fact, there wasn't yet a development of a religious mentality that would even apply any term that conveys the meaning of witch when addressing a vulva. The best English translation for a vulva is a prophetess, a soothsayer, Cirrus even, as someone who practices Seder as a divinatory art, but under a semi-shamanic performance, someone who requires specific attributes, a lifestyle and behaviors that makes the person capable of acquiring the necessary factors that leads to perform Seder. And indeed, we could argue that there are a lot of similarities between witchcraft and shamanism, surely, as I've expressed before on another video. But witchcraft isn't shamanism, and shamanism isn't traditional folk magic. But there are, indeed, certain things or certain aspects in common, especially the animistic mindset involved, but each has very specific behaviors that clearly separate witch from a shaman. A vulva was not a witch. She did not practice Scandinavian traditional folk magic, otherwise known as trolldom from the modern period onwards. A vulva was a soothsayer. And the Seidkona was a woman practitioner of Seder, which the sources express that could be both a vulva as an itinerant seer or a woman within the Old Norse society that practiced magic. But there, there's, there's a, a difference here. In, in certain points. Every vulva is also a seitkona, but not every seitkona was a vulva, right? Both practice magic and uh, to a certain extent are related to practices of a divinatory character, but the vulva was an itinerant seer, a, an outsider, with a behavior, character, and even a social disposition that places her as someone far more indigenous and from a different ethnic group, while the Seidkona was a woman who practiced Seder within and not outside the Old Norse social and magical religious reality. A Seidkona is someone who we could perhaps call a witch, but on the modern sense and understanding as someone who practiced traditional folk magic, to a certain extent, but not a witch, as the meaning and application of the term throughout the history of medieval and modern European witchcraft. I hope you get my meaning, I truly hope so. A vulva was not understood as a witch. She wasn't called a witch. Uh, nor was a seidkona, for that matter. These are terms that have far better English translations than witch, which I've given here. A vulva, a seidkona, among other terms I hope I haven't forgotten to place here on the screen, was uh, were seeresses, prophetesses, uh, sorceresses, soothsayers, wise women. However, there are terms in Old Norse that do have parallels with the meaning and the applications of the term witch by the church and what was understood to be a witch until quite recently before the reinvented meaning within neo-paganism influenced by post-industrial romanticisms. The terms are forveda, Flag, Flagkona, Thala, Holla, Jyger, and Skas. All of them have a highly derogatory meaning and all with an approximate meaning of which, with a range of negative connotations. These are terms that start to appear in the early medieval north, with a mentality towards magical arts, especially women's magical arts, traditional folk magic, and women's secret societies, a mentality far closer to that of the rest of Europe towards women who were labelled witches in a derogatory sense, that's all there is to it, with very negative connotations. Before neo-paganism uh, introduced the, the new meanings of witchcraft. So when we call a vulva a Nordic witch, it is a historical and philological error. A serious prophetess soothsayer would be far better translated terms into the English language that convey a better meaning of what they were and how they were seen and understood. There were no Nordic witches before the, the Middle Ages, the Scandinavian Middle Ages. There were Nordic seeresses, Nordic prophetesses, Nordic soothsayers, 
Nordic uh, sorceresses. I think I've already said that one. Nordic witches appears as a response to a negative mentality towards women and magical arts, and then are produced other terms, such as the ones given previously, and the more recent terms such as Trollkonu, Hix, Hexe, Hexa, and so on, whose meanings are negative and quite derogatory. Again, the etymological roots have changed through time, and these terms may have indeed come from other terms uh, and, and, and that, that meant something else entirely. Language is always evolving. However, I feel the need to once again underline that we are not here dealing with the etymological roots, but the meanings of the terms and how they have been applied in the periods and geographical realities. There was never such a thing as a Nordic witch for pre-Christian Scandinavian societies. That is a term that does not give justice to the pre-Christian social and magical religious perceptive reality of women who practiced Seder. The development of the figure of the witch starts within Christian context onwards. And whatever we may call ourselves these days and our meaning and our understandings of witch and witchcraft and how we see ourselves and the different meanings we have constructed through our evolution of both languages and mentalities isn't the same as in the past. If you have any questions and doubts an existential crisis or sharing knowledge and other pieces of information, please comment below all you want. I may not have the time to reply to all of you, my apologies beforehand, but I will certainly do my best to read all the comments. I will try to read all of them, as many as possible. I hope this video was useful. Thank you so much for watching. See you on the next video. And as always, thanks for today. Obrigado por hoje. Farewell, my dear friends.